really one of the Fuji guys here to give you an unboxing of the brand new Fujifilm X100S. Uh, let's just take a look at the contents of this camera. Of course, you're going to get your owner's manual, your software CD, and your warranty information. Uh, depending on the country that you get the camera from, it may have a different owner's manual. Uh, if you want to look at other languages, you can go on the software CD itself, and uh, there you'll find PDF versions of every single owner's manual and available in every single language for this particular camera. Okay, so I'm going to leave that aside. It's not that interesting. A little cap comes off. And then there's a little protector foam piece here, right here. Looks actually good for my RC car, to be honest with you, as a bumper, eh? Gotta save that. And uh, let's just take a look at the uh, camera itself. It comes in a little protective cover there. And of course, you got the cap. And it's gonna basically match the camera. It's a metal cap, which is great. Uh, it's a good looking camera, not much difference than the X100S. There are some minor changes. They've uh, improved the uh, area here to prevent dust from collecting. They re reposition and redesign the uh, toggle switch so it's lighter, easier to, to flip with uh, one-handed operation. The focusing is changed so that you can go from one extreme to the other uh, where AFC is generally never used. And to be personally honest with you, I'm not a big fan of the AFC uh, function on this camera. It's, to my knowledge, I don't think it operates the way it should operate. I think uh, I've been pushing for this, but it should be operating like how DSLRs work by pushing the shutter halfway down to start the focusing mechanism and all the way down to photo versus continuously focusing. But regardless of that, I'm just going to leave the cap open. Again, there are some minor changes too to the camera. Uh, of course, the A automatic is a slightly bigger gap now to the uh, shutter speed, so that's changed. The tension on this is a lot higher now on the, on the exposure compensation button. You still got the aperture controls in the front. Um, they've changed some of the, the layouts. The Q menu is also uh, has a low protector so you don't accidentally push it. The manual key button is up a little bit further now. Uh, so they've adjusted that to make it easier. But you can also can lock by holding the manual key button down. Um, they changed the AF option. It used to be on this side, now it's on this side. So for one-handed operation, you can actually move the focus point and push back to reset it. So it's pretty cool. And of course, they still have the similar layout, but they've adjusted a few things. They've also improved the seal on this so that uh, you know dust is not uh, entering into the to the viewfinder. So that's some major changes. Again, this is just an unboxing, so let's continue on. Uh, of course, you're going to have your uh, battery. It uses the NP95 battery, just like the X100S. Uh, nothing special on that. You got the charger this time. Uh, in the past, this uh, charger was a uh, a remake of an older charger that had a clip. This clip is actually now glued on pl in place from the factory, so you're not going to lose it. If you have an, X, an older X100, I recommend you get some crazy glue and glue the piece right on because, you know, what else are you going to charge uh, charge batteries with this um, with this charger, right? So definitely want to charge that for a few hours. And of course, depending on the country that you uh, purchase the camera from, uh, it's going to come with the appropriate ad adapter here. And again, you can just plug it into the side like that. If, I like the cable because you know I can plug into multiple outlets without eating up a lot of the outlets. But for some of you who who rather you know like to not carry the the, the little cable with you, I'm sure you can find a little adapter. Whether it's a MacBook that has an attachment that you can just slide right on top and plug it into the wall like a wall charger. Yeah, again, it's up to you. Okay. Uh, you got your straps. This is basically the standard shoulder straps. You know, works, I guess. Um, can't say too much of it. It does feel pretty nice. Has the Fujifilm logo on one side, I guess. Um, and of course, it's going to come with the appropriate uh, attachments so that you can put it onto the cam. I'm not going to do it here, of course. Um, and here is the attachment. You got the little uh, lug nuts here. And of course, you got the leatherettes uh, to protect it. You got this little tool. If you ever knew what the heck this is, what this is. It basically has a little slider here, and all you do is push it in place like that, and it lifts up a little gap so that you don't, you know, obviously hurt your fingernails, and now you can actually insert it into the lug nuts. Talking about the lug nuts, they've actually reinforced this lug nuts, so uh, again, you're not going to get that wear and tear, uh, which is great, but, you know, you can always go with a circular, circular uh, piece if you do find that somewhere, okay? What else do you get? Last thing is the USB cable. Um, you know, not nothing special about the USB cable. It's just a USB cable, um, and of course, it allows you to uh, download images off the camera. 
On the side of this camera, you get this little port that pops open. That's where the USB connector goes into, as well as your mini HDMI. Uh, saying that, this little uh, USB also doubles as a microphone input. So they've actually wired uh, the ability to, to do an external microphone through this camera via this USB connector. And so when you buy the optional microphone from us, it does come with the, the, the appropriate adap adapters so that you can connect it to this um, uh, port, which is kind of nice. Again, uh, these are some of the contents that are on this camera. Let's see if we can actually power this camera up and see what happens. So let's pretend I just charge this battery for like, you know, four hours. Of course, out of the factory, the lithium batteries are slightly charged. The camera also, uh, you know, you do, you, need to pick up, you do need to pick up an SD card. Um, I highly recommend you pick up, you know, for this camera, a class 10 card. In fact, at an ultra high speed card, the fastest card that you can get, whether it's the SanDisk, you know, Ultras, Extremes, you name it. The faster, the better performance you can get with this camera, especially if you enjoy shooting in RAW and JPEG. And of course, with the new HD video option at you know full HD, 60 frames a second, you know you definitely need all that speed in in the card itself. You would definitely see an improvement. Let's turn on the camera, switch it like that, and of course uh, you're going to have to select the language. You can use the directional pad, rotating it or pushing up and down. It contains lots of languages on this camera, too many that I can't even name or even recognize. Of course, I do recognize English there. Perfect. As default, you can get this sort of DSLR information screen, right? So if you want to get rid of that, you just push the display back button and go down to standard and even a customized uh, setting here where you can actually fully customize the scene and put it back to the autofocus. Again, this camera has a new uh, X-Trans CMOS 2 with the face detection pixel, so focusing is, is actually quite fast on this camera. Um, first thing you want to do is go into the menu, push left, go down to the setup side here, and you know skip the silent mode and go right to the sound setup. What you're going to do, turn off the volume on the operations, turn off the volumes on the shutter, and basically you're ready to go for super fast speed. I would also go into the power management, ensure that uh, I have high performance on so that I can get the fastest. The power save mode you want to leave off unless you want to really save power, but you want the maximum speed and everything. And with the power save mode on the OVF, you, I don't believe it's going to show the histogram. So if you would find that your histogram display is gone, it's because you have the power save mode on. You know, other things to set up on this camera, I guess. Uh, I like the way the menus now are done. It's done by tabs, which is great. So here's a few things that I always like to do on my camera um, is to go into the, um, let me see, the manual assist option here. You can change it from standard to digital split or focus peak. I'm just going to leave it as standard. Uh, generally, uh, this is an autofocus camera that has face detection. There's really no need for me to manual focus, but some of you guys enjoy doing the manual focusing, so good for you. You have those extra options on your side. Um, you got this corrected... AF frame, you can use the OVF. Highly recommend you turn it on and learn and understand how that works. Uh, the, the AE lock button, don't do the push on and off, do the on and off switch instead. Makes it easier instead of you having to hold it down. And I think that's really all you need to do to set up the camera. The function button, the ISO, you can also set the auto ISO from here. It's limited at 800. You can do whatever you like with it. Generally, I, what I do is to match it up at um, at 3200 because I'm fully confident in this camera for quality and I like you know I'm taking pictures of people so I'd rather have it at 180 or a second it is up to you for sure on what and how you want to configure that uh, anyways um, putting it back to the auto auto this is basically the program mode I'm going to take a photo by pushing halfway down and taking the picture as you can see now with the sound off focus is a lot closer than before as you can see and if it doesn't focus, then you may have to put it in the macro mode, but they changed that, which is great. And, of course, the drive mode now. Uh, let's just take a quick look at that at high speed, six frames a second. I let go. I can keep going. I let go. I can keep going. So that's kind of new addition. I love the buffer. It's a lot better. Uh, it is still writing, so that's why I recommend the fastest card possible, especially when you're doing... Um, you know, um, uh, when you're doing JPEGs and RAW, you got the Q button now. The AF button is nice. You can push up, move it to any direction you like. You can size it up, make it smaller, move it to the position. And if you want to reset, you push the display back now. Not, no longer the menu OK button, okay? 
because the menu OK button basically allows you to confirm something. So if I do that, push OK, it confirms. Or I can actually just tap the shutter button and it confirms automatically. Again, if I want to reset, just push display and it's back to normal. Push that in the middle and it resets the size of the EF points. So again, that's just a quick unboxing of this camera. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my video. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, and of course, um, you know, if you want to know more information about this camera, I'm going to do a top features on this camera. So again, look out for that video. Until then, I'm Billy, one of the Fuji guys.